In today's video, I'm gonna be having a look at oil, the cut, dislocation from price, and the potential for arbitraging oil. We're also gonna have a quick talk about what a stranded asset is. I'm gonna talk about IMF and the climate perspective they're taking right now, as well as the FOMC news from last night, Galeed Sciences Incorporated being back in the media again, and my expectations for the ECB tonight. Hello and welcome to another ACY Securities Market Update. My name is Alastair Schultz and I'll be your host through today's trading journey. Now the first thing to take note of is COVID-19. We have got the numbers rising above 3.1 million in terms of infections. We're also seeing that the deaths have well and truly gone past 200,000. And at this point in time, we've got nearly a million people recovered from the virus so far. Now remember, we want to keep an eye on when the death rates and the recovery rates actually start to align together and eventually we want to see the recovery rates outweighing what we see in terms of infections on a daily basis. But that's going to be a milestone marker sometime in the future and it's obviously not there just yet. Now the first thing I'm talking about today is really on oil. There have been a number of cuts over the last couple of months. We've also seen some of the largest cuts ever done with 9.7 million barrels per day by OPEC cutting about 10% of the world supply. It was obviously not enough with the deficit being that we needed really a 20% cut on the whole marker. But interestingly enough, what we're seeing right now is that we have had a reduction in that. Now the cuts that have occurred in the US was from compared to last month were about 2 million barrels per day. We've seen Russia cutting about 19%, same sort of thing this time last month. But we're expecting to see more. We should likely see a big cuts starting to occur because the production of oil is going to start coming to a standstill. There will be refineries and there will also be those that are producing crude oil and digging for it, drilling for it and getting it out of the ground are also going to have to stop on that side of things. So that might mean that we start seeing our numbers come down in terms of how much we have in storage and the price start to rise. Interestingly enough though, we are starting to see a dislocation between oil prices. In this chart here I've been looking at, it's from Bloomberg Economics, and we can see on here that we've got a difference between the INE prices and the DME prices. Now the INE is from the Asia sort of specific, it's actually from China, and the DME prices are from the sort of the, the Middle East sort of way. Now what we're finding is that there is such a difference in the price that you can actually arbitrage this position. You can buy stuff from the DME, ship it to China, and then make a little tidy profit on it that covers the shipping costs and everything else that you need with the tidy little profit for you to keep at the end of the day. Now if you're in large scale manufacturing or at least the shipping and transport of oil, then this would be an ideal scenario. For us as a trader, not so much because we can't actually do the future side of things and get it delivered unless you put a lot of time and effort into that sort of effort area. But we'll have to really consider what happens here in the future because we're starting to see a dislocation of oil prices. What does it mean for the rest of oil prices across the globe? Will we see a dislocation occur between WTI and Brent and the others that are going on? It's a possibility, I think it's unlikely, but it really is starting to show that the economy in China is trying to pick up as much as possible. They have had new storage facilities built in place to sort of be able to take on extra stuff. So it could be a matter of they're just trying to take advantage of the situation where we have really cheap oil around the globe and get as much of that in as opposed to using their own sort of producing parts. Now, the next thing to sort of have a look at today is really about stranded assets. Now, I've got a little bit of a description here, which I'm just going to read to you. And, and uh, the stranded assets are assets that have suffered from an unanticipated or premature write downs, devaluations, or conversion to liabilities. So, what does that mean in the reality of things? Well, if we think about what's going on on the ground, we have shops that are closed, we're not getting anywhere near as much shipping, we have planes that are grounded. So all of these things are asset classes that would usually make money, but currently they're stranded, unable to do so. So you have to have a look at the idea around what companies are dealing with this sort of stranded asset issue and how they are negotiating their way through it and what they might be looking to do in the second quarter of this year. Naturally, their earnings reports are all coming out now. The next lot of earnings reports is probably going to have a little bit more interest on what's happening with these stranded assets and how they're going to reuse them or make them more available for other areas of their businesses. If they can't do that, then the chances are that these assets are just going to turn into liabilities for a prolonged period until people's behaviours for going out and buying things change. And naturally, that's not going to happen until we see a change to the lockdown system that we've got currently. Now, the next thing to sort of talk about is about the IMF. So the International Monetary Fund have started pushing for the idea and making recommendations that after COVID-19, since we have seen such so, so much environmental factors changing, 
with the reduction in the amount of plane travel and carbon emissions and stuff like that, that they are putting recommendations in place that we should be looking to push forwards and incentivize the idea of going for a carbon neutral planet and that we should be putting towards ideas, businesses, projects, whatever it may be, that are gonna be building those on those sort of foundations. So they have made the recommendations that the, that, should, that the environmental impact sort of business side of things or the ESGs should certainly be incentivized for, for getting more funding and that we should reduce the funding for the fossil fuel derived businesses in the world. Now that's interesting to come from the IMF. We've heard Citigroup do it earlier. We might see a large production of people or, or, or a large group of, of these sort of industries start pushing towards that, especially from the banking and financial services sector which is really where the incentivization is going to come from with either cheaper rates for those sort of businesses or perhaps even bonuses if you find certain ways to do things differently to what we have been used to doing in the past. Now the next bit to have a look about is the FOMC. Last night we did have an FOMC announcement come out. We know that their economy is contracted by about 4.8% so far. They are expecting to see this go further in the next quarter which is not necessarily great news at all with people with those who are expecting to see a turnaround on that is going to be an issue especially when you think about this v-shaped recovery sort of program now the things that i've sort of marked out on this chart for you here is that they didn't change any of the rates they have been maintained at zero percent with the economic activity obviously that i just said before is likely to drop even further in the next quarter However, the one that, the, that stood out the most was that they've changed their idea, ideations on what is happening with the pandemic and how much weight it's going to have. So usually when we think of stuff that comes out of the Fed, it's either in near term, medium term or the long term. In this case, they've upgraded the idea of how much impact the pandemic is going to have to the medium term, indicating that they think it's going to last around at least until sometime next year. The other part to sort of say is that Powell has increased the idea and said that they need more stimulus to help combat COVID-19's responses. So that'll be interesting to see. Naturally, they're still going to continue through with treasuries and asset purchase programs on mortgage-backed securities. So nothing new there. They were already doing that with last, with the last lot of quantitative easing that we're doing. They may start to increase that. I imagine they probably will, especially considering next quarter's results if they do come out negative. Now, the next piece to have a look at is Galeed is back in the papers again. Last week, I was talking about them and they had sort of what they what was said or released or publicly leaked as a failed drug sort of testing for it. And the drug in question that they were talking about was going towards the aim of not curing or vaccinating against COVID-19, but helping with the recovery. Since then, we've actually had some data come out that shows that it actually reduces it by about four days in the recovery process. So before the average is about 15 to 16 days. They're now talking, taking the drug from Galeed Sciences Incorporated, that reduces it by about four days. So the estimates were there about 11 to 12 day mark, people were recovering on those who were taking the drug versus those who were on a placebo. Now that's interesting enough because they did obviously have a little bit of a tumble on their stock price after the, the leaked report saying that it wasn't really working. Where that's come from, maybe they've tweaked it, maybe they've changed the drug a little bit to make it work more effectively. But arguably so, the price has obviously gone up on Galeed. So that might be something to watch for. Naturally, it's not a vaccine, so they haven't gotten anywhere near that. But what they have been looking for is being able to reduce and ease the comfort of those who might be suffering from it so far and to help prevent them going on a ventilator. Now, the next piece to sort of have a look at today is on the ECB. I have some expectations for them tonight. I don't believe they're actually going to cut rates or anything like that because they physically can't really go anywhere with that. My biggest anticipations are that they're going to expand their pandemic emergency asset pro program and they're likely going to try and support the rest of the community or the economy by going through the banking areas on banking sectors to try and give stimulus that way. So I wouldn't at all be surprised if the current methods that they are using are expanded upon effectively. Uh, any more than that is going to be new or surprising. Uh, and anything else that we see in terms of rate changes is also going to be somewhere to be of interest, but my chances of that happening are quite low. So I do expect that we will, or am anticipating that we will see a little bit more on the expansion of stimulus side around COVID-19 and where they've already started putting funds at this point in time. Now, if there's anything from today's video or even some of my other stuff that you'd like to get in contact with me about, feel free to shoot me an email at talktoal at acy.com. And of course, like and subscribe to the video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a great trading day ahead.